started raining. This is a late one. I got here really late. Um, I'm in a pine plantation and I found a spot. I've just checked the floor and everything. It's okay. Um, some pine cones around. You can see Bruce. I've got a light attached to him. I'll show you what the light is later. Bruce, come on. Yeah. You might be able to see the light attached to the back of his collar. <laughs> so I can spot him no matter where he is. I know where he is, where he's around. Um, so look, I've got to get on, uh, get everything set up. I've got a flawless tent. I think it's the Smoky Hut, one type of Smoky Hut tent. And I've got a tarp. It's just starting to rain a bit, um, but tomorrow uh, it's meant to be pretty bad rain. So I need to get everything set up. Um, yeah, got to get a move on. So let me get on with that. So as I, said, I did check the floor just to make sure that there were no pine cones or anything. Um, this doesn't have a floor in it. And I found what I think is sort of the flattest spot. Now it comes with a pole. So what my plan is, is to use the pole at first, but then I might actually put a ridge line in just so I've got a bit more room in the, in the tent with Bruce. <laughs> you can see with his light. Now, I've never set this up, it's brand new. It's actually a hot tent. Um, and we've got a winter storm coming in a week. And so I thought I would try this out just to see if it's something that I'm interested in. Yeah, it's one tigress smoky hut. So let's see how this thing looks and works. I think you stake it out first and then you slide the pole in. Yeah, and there's, that's obviously where the chimney would usually go. So the door, there's just one door on this. We've got to find it so I know it's the right spot. Okay, so the door is there, right. I'm going to start just by staking out where the door is. This ground is going to be rock solid, I think. Okay. Must be it. Okay. Bruce, what are you doing? See that light running all over the place. <laughs> uh oh. Rat's nest. That light that I've got attached to Bruce is brilliant. You can look, you can see him running around in the dark. It's great. It's really firmly clipped onto his. His, his collar. Okay, I've got two uh, trees here. One's quite a long way away, but I reckon I can reach it. So I need a short one to just go to here and a long one to go over there. 
and then I'll bring it out this way. Okay. All right, we've got a plan. Okay. This is actually long enough. Perfect. Okay. Start getting it hooked up. good. Right, we need another one. It's hooked on. this has turned out to be but I've got to get it right so I'm actually going to turn it turn the whole tent round a bit <laughs> we'll see how this goes so I need to move the whole tent forward about half a foot and turn it round just slightly um, the other thing I could do is bring the tarp over I guess let's try that first Yeah, I can't believe I got that wrong. Okay. Aha, fixed. Didn't have to move the tent. Hey, Brucey. What you doing? What are you doing? Wait till everybody on YouTube sees your light. They're gonna love it. Oh, finally got it sorted. <laughs> that was a faff. As you can see, it's now, the tarp is just perfectly over the back of the, the tent. Um, I've got, I mean, this is two meters wide. I've got this flap coming down the front in case the wind blows any rain. It's just gonna drip down the front there. Um, I'm covered, you know, it's, it's all good. It all looks good. Brucey's here and he's got his little light on. Come here, Bruce. Come and show them every, go and show them your light. Come here. Come here. Bruce, here. Here, to me. To me, Bruce. He's acting up. Look at this. Up. Look at that light. So I can see where he is all the time. You want your dinner? Right, I've got to give Bruce his dinner because he's starving. And he's also going to get a little bit of my dinner as well later when I've got... Can I do it first? Find out. Move, Bruce. He'll get some um, of mine when I've done it. Hang on. Sit. Wait. Sit. Sit, Bruce. You know the rules. Wait. Up. Uh Let me move it over here a bit. There you go. Yeah, so great setup. Um, oh, it was a I, just working out how this tent was meant to look was quite tricky. Um, oh, this is a nice angle. Yeah, it, it it didn't immediately make sense as to how it was meant to go. Um, but yeah, you just peg it out. I've got the pole in there. I was going to take the pole out to run it up to the top. Uh, so I didn't have the pole in there to give me more room in there. But actually, it's so roomy that it doesn't matter that the pole is there. Um, maybe if I had the, the stove in there as a hot tent, then I would take the pole out. Uh, and I've got my Steiker, Hilberg Steiker ground sheet. Um, I've got that in here, my fo uh, footprint, and I'll just lay straight on that. And Bruce's bed is in there, and he's finished that. He's finished his dog food already. 
So I think it's time. Uh, I'll give you a tour around inside later. Um, it's getting a bit chilly. I might put my jacket on. I think it's time to start some uh, cooking. I am absolutely starving. And tonight we are having cheeseburgers. Good old fashioned cheeseburgers. Isn't that right, Bruce? I don't know if you can see him lying at my feet here. So uh, let me get cranking on that. I'll come back to you. Okay, so what I'll do is just clear some of this pine needles out of the way. Bit of a fire hazard. Mind that, Brucey. Good boy. Sorry to kick you off your comfy spot. Okay. You can come back here now, Brucey. Good boy. Hello. <laughs> How am I going to cook like that? That's better. He has to get comfy. Right. So, yes, dinner. Burgers. I forgot my little table, but luckily, this is probably the same height as having the table anyway. Trusty Tranger. I don't know if uh, you can hear that in the background. That is the fire station. So in this area, in New Zealand, there are a lot of rural, the rural communities. There are rural fire stations and everybody's a volunteer. So all the farmers, Everyone else, they will volunteer for it. Anyway, the siren goes off and they're all called to duty. That's what that noise is. And I need my lighter. Give me one second. Now, interestingly, usually I just use meths, but I found it was sooting up a lot. Oh, it's getting cold. It was sooting up a lot. So I made a mixture, concoction of mainly meths, but some ethanol as well, uh, ethanol cleaner that I've got. That's like a commercial cleaning product. 70% um, ethanol and water in there. The water is meant to stop it sooting. So I tested it and sure enough, it worked. Now I don't know if it's gonna burn as hot, but it's better than sooting all the time, which I find quite irritating. Okay, now you know, I actually brought tongs with me this time, somewhere. is just out of shot. That is my burgers. So Silver Fern Farms. Um, Manuka smoked salt beef and lamb burgers. 97% red meat. I guess the rest is fat. Um, yeah, from New Zealand. So where are my tongs? Ah, we've got to do the onions. So 
So even though I've lit this, it's not ready yet. I will do that and I will put some good old New Zealand Lewis Road butter in there. You know, it doesn't matter how many times I say New Zealand, New Zealand, New Zealand, <laughs> New Zealand, New Zealand, New Zealand, New Zealand, New Zealand, there'll be a comment. Wow, that's, that's amazing, that place. Where in the world are you? But my loyal subscribers are quick to point out it's New Zealand. I, even in my last shirt, <laughs> in my last video, sorry, I wore a New Zealand t-shirt. If you saw that where I was camping by the lake. And um, I still got the same question. Wow. Such a beautiful place. Where is that? And someone said, is it Europe? Someone said, is it Australia? It's all fun and games. I don't mind. I'm just surprised, that's all. Okay, first things first. Onion. Because we're going to sweat the onions off. And here comes the rain. Not meant to rain that much tonight. It's meant to really, uh, it's meant to really start kicking. Don't, Bruce. No, no. It's meant to really get heavy from I think 6 a.m. tomorrow. But I'm actually going to be here all day tomorrow. I'm in no hurry at all. So I've got some great breakfast lined up, and I've got some great lunch lined up. So don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Right, what did I do with my rubbish? Ah. I don't need the pines in there. All right, cool beans. Right, so onions gonna go in. Gosh, you know what I've forgotten, don't you? It's a golden rule when you're cooking. Have a beer. What a rookie mistake that was. Bruce, why are you lying in the rain? Okay, so Bruce is lying in the rain. Anyone who knows my channel will know this. So this is Parrot Dog Hazy IPA. Cheers, everybody. Wow. I could have just chugged that whole thing. That was delicious. Parrot Dog Hazy IPA. That is really nice. Uh, yeah, anyone who knows my channel knows Bruce, and he, you know he doesn't do rain. I mean, he does rain. He doesn't do tents. Now, I haven't put these in rings because I'm not a fan of having rings of onion in my in my burger. I just like big chunks. It will all separate anyway. All righty. Got my tongs. Feeling confident. This is going to be a good meal. I don't think I've ever had a bad meal out here, saying that. Right, so this is taking a while to bloom. but it is getting hot. So I'm using the bigger Tranja 25, my new Tranja, as opposed to my small 27, because the burgers will take up most of this pan. Oh, 
Oh, I'm so hungry. So yeah, I didn't bring my table, but it's on the cover. Not sure that I need it. Loving this beer. Hmm. Hope you can hear the rain. You're gonna, you're gonna see it dripping down the front of the tarp soon anyway. We have sizzling. So on my last trip, I went out to a lake. I there was a slim chance that I'd get some rain, and you know what? You can when I look back on the drone footage that I did on that video, you can see a rainbow in the rain. Just a oh, couple of kilometers in one direction, it almost had rain. I know you're all disappointed. But hopefully you're all happy that I got some beautiful weather to chill out in. As much as I do love camping in the rain, I do love camping in beautiful conditions as well. So what it is I love camping in the rain? I would not love it if I didn't have the right gear. I wouldn't love it if I was stuck in a tent. No. I'd hate that. Yeah, gotta have the right gear. I'm cold. And this tent, this smoky hut. We'll see how it fares. Seems pretty good. Um. I don't know what it's like in a storm. I haven't guided out. I'm not expecting any severe winds, but even if it was really windy, the, the design is such that it really should hold. There are no poles to worry about. It's all pegged in. So you would hope it would be okay. As far as the waterproofness of it, well, only half of it is gonna get exposed. I do like this zip, very waterproof zip. Um, does it have one door or two doors? I can't remember. I think it's only got one door. Yeah. Which doesn't bother me that much. Temperature's dropped. I could have bought a bigger tarp. Eh, should I have done? I don't know. I think this is enough. Yeah. Um... The one thing I do actually like about this tent is because it doesn't have a floor, if I really wanted to get out of the wind, I could move my chair back into the vestibule here and still cook, no problem, be out of the wind. Because it is very high. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I don't know if you can see me in here. Okay, this is a bit annoying. Hey, a note to one tigress, put elastic on these things. Elastic, so it's tight. Not this flimsy rubbish cord thing. If they're not elastic, then this is what happened. Yeah, I mean, usually you'd have both doors open, I'm guessing. Um, I don't know how structurally stable it is if one door isn't on, but yeah, see, I'm now completely out of the wind. It was quite breezy just there. So I do like that, yeah. 
But the whole point is I don't want to stay in. I want to be out. Like so. Oh, I'm burning. I'm burning my onions. Oh, no, I'm not. They're just sticking a bit. Ah, oh, I don't know if you can see the onions, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I could have bought a bigger tarp. I was, ac I was actually toying with the idea of bringing my four by three meat, yeah, four by three meat tarp, my three FUL gear tarp. And setting up like that. So I'd have sort of almost a meter coming down on the left, a meter coming down on the right. Yeah. Um, next time. I'm going out in another rain event in a couple of days, actually. Meant to snow. But definitely a lot of rain. Chance of snow. Wouldn't, wouldn't hold your breath. What is it here? May. Winter really kicks in in July. June, July. <laughs> With Bruce wearing that light. <laughs> I can see in the pitch black out there is him walking back and forth. It's great to be able to see where he is. This is fantastic. Oh, you heard his name. what he's really enjoying is the light coming off from his neck. It's making him look at the shadow. And he's a bit neurotic about that, so he's actually enjoying that. Oh man, I'm so hungry. Okay. I don't know if there's anything I really need to do with these burgers. Fancy box. Oh, it's two in each pack. That's handy. Look at that. What are they again? Beef and lamb. Gosh, what? Well, there's a chance I'm gonna have four tonight because I'm so hungry. So I'll put these back in the in the cooler. Of a chilly breeze. Oh well, I'll warm up when I eat. I don't want to put a jacket on. Seems like a defeatist if I did that. Oops, that went a bit quickly. That was quick, Bruce. That went very quickly. I might have to get another one of those out. There was something wrong with that one. But yeah. Must be what it was. Well, can't blame me. Bruce, honestly. God, do you love that thing. Why did I scoop all these pine needles here? All right. 
How are the onions? The onions... Getting there. Oh, and before anyone comments, oh, if you're chilly, why don't you light a fire? No fires allowed in a, in this plantation. You know what? I'm not going to wear my puffer jacket. I am going to put on my other jacket. Oh, because that breeze is chilly. better. Just cut the wind out. Perfect. Okay, you know what? These are good to go. Now I could just tip the whole lot in, but I want that butter. They smell so good. The camera, camera, caramelized buttery smell. Well, now all I'm smelling is burning. Because I need to take that off the heat for a sec. Right, so, right. Burgers. I could have made my own burgers, but I didn't have time. And usually I shop on the way. I don't do an awful lot of home prep for the food. Just don't really have time, don't really think about it. I've got other, other things on my mind usually. Okay. Oh, now they've put that was good of them. Separated them with paper. I am definitely having four of these. What? You gotta be kidding me. I'm definitely having four of these. Thing is, do I make them double cheeseburgers? Now, for the cheese, I'm doing something different. I'm not doing your normal, I don't know, Swiss, American, whatever. I'm doing Brie for no particular reason. Is it going to offend some people? Probably. I don't care. It's my dinner. It's my channel. Gonna have to accept it. I'm weird. I like Brie. I could have gone with Camembert. Oh no! Shit. Oh no, it's got bits stuck on it. Hey Bruce, want some cheese? Want some cheese? 
It's a little pit with something on it. You want that? There you go. Good boy. Thought you'd have that. That was surprised you weren't sitting at my feet waiting already. Typical. I'm warm. I'm getting warm now. Okay, so Bruce, no, no, go away. Bruce is trying to eat my onions. I don't know if you saw that. He was about to. I just took my eyes off him. He was going to go in there. He's so cheeky. Okay. Bit of brie. Doesn't need to melt or anything. Just needs to warm up a bit. <laughs> I'm so hungry. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. Okay, now, uh, a while back, I made some burgers, and I made a comment, ah, oh, why don't they slice the burger buns? It's so irritating. And someone said, well, they don't do that. They don't do that because it will dry out. They were so confident. I think it was from Germany. They don't do that. The burger buns dry out. That's why they don't do it. I said, well, why do they do it in hot, hot dog buns? And there was no response. And look, sliced. They do do it. I'd had them before. But I know everyone on YouTube knows more than I do about absolutely everything, but it just didn't make any sense to me. And yes, I'm opening another Coleman's because I forgot my Coleman's mustard. But I get through it so quickly. So I am not buttering <laughs> my burgers. I am mustarding. And this is none of your American mustard. I don't know how to explain it. Find somewhere if you don't know what it is. My fellow Americans. I spent a lot of time in America. Um, I used to work for American investment banks. Spent a lot of time all over there, especially in New York. So find somewhere, a steakhouse, there are steakhouses, Smith & Walensky, they have um, English mustard. I know, because I've had it there. Oh my God, that's hot. Ooh, that was hot. Right, it's burger time, I'm so excited. Christ, I should be doing this over the plate, really, shouldn't I? Bye-bye, mustard. Because I'm bound to... I'm making such a mess. What is going on? My Jello Lawson would be mortified. Gordon Ramsay, well... He'd be telling me exactly where to get off. Okay. One down. Come on, you can do it. Another down. Ow! It's spitting and it's hot. All right. Uh, onions. Have I just put that upside down? Idiot. I have. My sesames are going to be the wrong way up. Hey ho. Oh my god, I'm making such a mess. Help! I need Anne. My wife, she wouldn't make such a mess. Okay. There's some onion here, Brucey. In your bowl. For you. It's garlic you're not allowed to have. Okay. I've <laughs> made such a mess. <sighs> Cheeseburgers. 
Bruce, what's in your bowl? Mm-mm. Mmm. So good. I'm going to do one for Bruce. Next time you're making a cheeseburger, just try brie. Why isn't every meal burgers? Mm. Well, I promised I would cook him one. And he's got more fans than I do. I'd be torn to pieces if I didn't. So I might as well cook both. And have them. And just be absolutely stuffed. It, it's not gluttony. It's animal welfare. I'm doing this for Bruce. Okay, it's gluttony. Whatever, it's cold. No, you see my breath. Oh, fizzy bit. Oh my God, that beer is good. Oh, discombobulated. I think the best way to do this is to put a whole lot on and peel the top one off and then take the paper away. It sounded like a good idea in my head. Oh, there you go. That did work. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do is put cheese on just one of those, and Lord Fauntleroy there, the light seeker who is staring at his light shadow, Bruce, his lightsaber, he'll get a plain one. The burgers are so delicious.
beef and lamb. What a great combination. But the English mustard makes it. Number two, you know what I mean. Oh, I'm loving this setup. I don't know why I've not done it sort of like this before. There's a flap over the edge. My eyes are not bigger than my stomach, honestly. Maybe a little bit. Mm. The rain is coming in from that side. It's only a little bit. I could do with it coming in that way. I mean, I could have given him Bruce's raw. He doesn't really need his cooked at all. I'll just partially cook it for him. If a dog could choose, would he rather have it cooked or raw? To a dog, what tastes better? I don't know. Okay. I suddenly realized, I don't think dogs can have onions or garlic. Is that right? I don't know. He didn't eat the onion. Maybe they're not meant to have onion either. He certainly didn't eat it, so he wasn't interested. Oh, well. I'm so stuffed. Right. Well, who's not going to eat the onion? Possums will. Okay. Chop it up for him and let it cool down. He has no idea. That's why you can't see him. He's so busy playing with that light. Like the mad dog that he is. If he knew what was going in here, and it was for him, well, he'd be in the cam camera shop for sure. That looks really appealing. Could just leave it there and see how long it takes him to work it out. God, I'm so full. Those burger buns are huge. You know what? I might eat this one without a bun. Yeah, I will. Because. I'm stuffed. I've got a moth here. Mm. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, sorry. But I'm so glad to have Bruce with me. All right, that didn't trigger him. It was my last trip at the lake, and he wasn't allowed to come. People ask, they say, why no Bruce? Why no Bruce? Why no Bruce? But if you carry on watching, oh, heard your name, did you? If you carry on watching, you work these things out. I don't understand why people ask questions before the video's finished. Are they just impatient? Well, I, I, I'll be honest, I've given up understanding. Because once you get to a certain number of subscribers, there's so many people commenting that, you know, it's all sorts of people. Right, I want you to be able to see this. This will last seconds. That Bruce's bowl. Sit. Busted. Sit. You can wag your tail. Sit. 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 That's not sit. That's hovering. Good boy. Ah 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 ah. Good boy. How can you belch before you've even had it? Hmm? I do love you, yes. I. Ooh, that's your Oliver Twist face. It's gone. Then. You know, I dated someone once that sounded like that when they ate. I don't think it went past the first date. His little light hanging under his neck. And he's running around, it's like something from Star Wars. Got everything? Cool. Got your juices? Are you all done? No, 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 not mine as well. Not the chopping board. You've had yours. Okay. Bye bye, Bruce. Bye bye. <laughs> You've got everything. Go on. Off you go. Go away. Go on. Go and lie in the rain or whatever it is you want to do next. There's a TV show, or well, there used to be a TV show in England called Telly Tubbies. Oh, I'm sorry, is my tent in the way of your backside? Teletubbies. There was a vacuum cleaner in that. Used to hoover things up. Just everywhere. Especially food and things like that. I think I think it was called um Nunu. Nunu. We should have called him well, there's two things we could have called him. One was Nunu, the other is Dyson, because he just vacuums everything up. When Anne is cooking, my wife, when she's cooking, gorgeous wife, love you, Anne, you're wonderful. It's Mother's Day tomorrow, love you. And just in case you're wondering, she's at a yoga retreat that she organized, so I was home alone anyway. Anyway, Anne has a tendency to 
be on the clumsy side when cooking and dropping things and bits of food and things. Uh, half, I think she does on purpose. Anyway, he just lies at her feet waiting for something to drop. Mm. Only with Anne. He doesn't do it with me. She's going to bollock me now for that. Oh, mustard. Got to have mustard. Oh, that is a lot of mustard. Oops. Eh, whatever, you only live once. He's giving me the eye. Mmm. Mmm. Right. I'm actually going to take my time with this one. Sip my beer. Half of it's left. Sip my beer. Graze my burger. And come back to you afterwards. Sinking into the ground. Gotta put the, I don't know what you call this thing, sand mat or something. Put this on. Honestly, it doesn't take much to sink in the ground with these sorts of chairs. This thing is a lifesaver. I've, I've tried it in pretty much everything. I haven't tried it in snow yet. It works in everything else. Let's see if that works. That's better. Brucey's lying just at my feet here. I don't know if you can see him. Oh. Hmm. It's number two dump, <laughs> isn't it, Bruce? Hmm? He's wet. It's raining. <laughs> He's out in the rain. Uh, it's a bit chilly. Temperature's definitely dropped. So I'm going to put my puffer jacket on. Should have taken it out earlier. Lofted it up a bit. Anyhow. You know. It's just a lightweight down jacket, nothing special. I'm so stuffed. I think Bruce is stuffed as well. Immediately feels <laughs> that just immediately feels better. Oh, oh. number three. Nice little shelf here. We've got a great little setup here in the woods. What a spot. This um, smoky hut, I'll show you it. Uh, I don't need this one anymore. This smoky hut tent. Actually, let me put my beanie on. Yeah, this. What is it? Uh, one tigress. 
smoky hut tent. Um, it's huge. The more I look at it, I don't know how many people you could actually sleep in it. I don't know what it's rated for, what they sort of advertise it for. I bought this off Amazon and I can't remember, I can't remember what it said. I think it said two to four people. But yeah, it is big. Obviously it doesn't have a floor. You'd have to choose your ground wisely. I've got my Hilberg Staker footprint in there, which is made of whatever it's called. I don't know what Hilberg called it. A curl on something curl on it's incredibly strong stuff uh, and it's grippy on the inside which is nice and I've, I've staked that in there a bit because we're on a little bit of a hill just a little bit of a slope there there is a bit of a ledge but and I don't want my sleeping pad sliding around all over the place so by staking that down and the fact it's a grippy surface it should hold me in place and Bruce's bed is in there. there's loads of room Loads of room. I'll show you later when I go to bed. And yeah, you can sit up fully in there on the chair. It's five foot two in there, something like that. A short person could just stand up in there. Anyway, I'm quite liking it. It doesn't weigh that much either. And you don't have to have that pole. If you've got a couple of trees around you and you can tie a ridge line, then, well, yeah, you don't need the pole. You could just do a ridge line instead. I'm assuming that's what it's designed to do. The vents look a little bit pathetic and minuscule, though, I have to say. There's two little vents at the top. And they don't look like they're going to do an awful lot. But there's a gap at the bottom anyway, so maybe it doesn't have a condensation issue. Rain's picking up. But I am covered. As long as it's not windy, then rain isn't an issue. I'll tell you what is an issue. Um, I don't have a cigar in my hand. It's cigar time. need this now I didn't bring any spirits with me on this one I've just had a big two-nighter with quite a large thing of rum. So I'm just having beer with it instead. Sorry if it disappoints. Beer and cigars go as well. Bruce has slipped on. He's got the light on him so I can see when he does turn up. Ah, oh, here he comes. I can see the light coming. It's amazing. Brilliant. Hello. Come here. Come on. Bruce, come here. Hey. Bruce. Bruce, hey. What are you doing? What have you found? Come here. Come on. Up. Bruce, up, up, up. He's found... I don't know what... Uh, uh, out of there. Out of there. Not in there. Oof. I don't know. He's his own man. Um... It's 
so peaceful. Except for Bruce. The wind is shifting constantly. <sighs> yeah, so I could have bought a bigger tarp and created a bit of a wind block. A lot of people uh, comment, oh, Rookie should have set up a, a wind break. That's just yet yeah, another tarp to bring, another bit of kit, another bit of kit, another thing that you've got to work on. Whilst I do love the luxury side of things, and I do carry a lot of gear, there's only so much I can take. There's only so much I can fit in the pack. So, windbreaks is something I've never bothered with. The reason for that is, if it's that windy, I'm going to go back in the tent. Because why would I want to be outside? And in the case of this tent, actually there is so much room in there that it really doesn't feel like you're cocooned in anyway. Saying that, you still need the tarp overhead though. Uh, because the door will let all the rain in. So you'd have to sit at the back of the tent. And then everything at the front would get soaking wet anyway. And if it's raining, driving rain, it's still not going to work. So... You do still need the tarp, even with this tent. But you can sit in the tent. That's your wind block. And the tarp is your rain block. Your rain shield. I think this is a great setup. Yeah. Smoky Hut tent. AquaQuest 2x3 tarp. I can't wait to try this thing with the uh, stove. The hot tent stove that I've got. Um, we'll see how that goes. Is that something people are interested in seeing as well? I mean, a hot tent stove? Again, I got it on Amazon. I thought, why not? It, it's titanium. It packs down really, really, really small. Um, I've never had the luxury of having that heat, that hot tent feeling. And I'm curious what it's like. And why more people don't do it. So uh, I'm, I'm ready to try that. And I think on my next trip, I will try it. If I like this tent. It's the first time I've had a tent without a floor. I mean, I've, I've gone out on the tarp a lot. But it just feels strange to have a tent and no floor. So, but if I like it, you know, then why not? We'll do that. So, I think what I'll do is, I'm just going to relax, enjoy my cigar, and my beers, and um, come back to you when it's time to go to bed, and I'll, then I'll show you the inside of this smoky hut tent. So, I'll come back to you later. So look at all the room in there, and that's the massive pad, and on the other side of the pole you can see there's, well, I'd say it's the width of two more pads, it's, it's just massive, there's Bruce's bed, which is the same width as the pad, and there's still space past that, so yeah, absolutely huge. So the vents are not great. I've had to put a stick in there to hold it open, as you can see. Um, it's a bit of a design flaw, I think. If I take that away, then the vent sort of collapses. But otherwise, it's pretty good. I don't like 
the fact that they don't have elasticated connectors for the door. But yeah, hey ho. Um, but yeah, it's pretty big. Very spacious inside. As you can see. Huge. And that's over five foot tall. So you can easily sit up in there on your chairs. Three of you, two, two, three of you, no problem at all. Could sit in there and have a good chat. Yeah, I've got my tarp over the top, as you can see, and then it comes down to where Bruce is, because you know what Bruce is like. Well, there's this little light shining under him. See that? It's attached to his collar. I can't lose him. Not like that. It's sort of lighting up everywhere he goes. So yeah, so I've got the tarp set up with the sort of lip coming down. And then over the back, covers the back of the tent perfectly. And in again. Yeah, good setup. I'm happy with this. <sighs> All right, it's bedtime. That's right, Brucey. No, 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 Bruce, that's your bed. Lay down. You're on your bed. Oh, he got a bit confused there. I think he wanted to go out and play more. I've toweled him off. He's a bit wet. But not too bad. He's on his bed. He's been just lying out in the rain. <laughs> the towel is to stop me getting wet from him. He doesn't want it on gets a bit hot he's gonna kick that off believe me he made himself a really messy bed outside got all the pine needles got them out of the way and then lay straight on them nightmare so there's loads of room in here um, it doesn't look like it because I'm bending down to see the camera but I can lift my hand straight up no problem at all and you can see I, I can't touch the edges it, it's massive in here it really is huge um, I'm glad I've got the footprint. It only covers half. I think if you could get a proper footprint for this that covers the entire thing, it would be really good. The one thing I've suddenly realized is there's gonna be a draft probably. The bottom of the tent doesn't touch the floor. There's probably a way you could do that, but I don't know how. It's not, they don't have adjustable straps, so. I'm not sure how easy that is. It is warmer in here though. It's pretty cold outside. Uh, so I've got my light and equipment quilt. I'm on my big thick Neowear Xtherm. He is zonked. He's been playing. Had that little light on him, which was fantastic. This thing. <laughs> if you if you've got a dog or something like that and yeah you want to find them this little light it clips on to it pretty much in this very strong clip what's it called an X tar X T A R R C S 200 that can't get it in focus it's too close um, you just press and hold and it's pretty bright. It is very bright. I had it on really low like that. Just under his collar like that. And I could see where he was. It changes colors, all sorts of things. I don't know how you change the colors. I can't remember, there's a sequence you press. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a cool little gimmicky light with the clip. Uh, it's waterproof rechargeable so I found that very useful for keeping track of Bruce in the middle of the night I like that yeah X XTAR RCS 200 I'll put a link to that I think I think I've got a link somewhere where I got it from yeah uh, so I'm gonna hit the sack I'm tired um, when I turn the camera off the light will die so I need to use my headlamp um, I'm gonna, yeah, hit the sack, it's late. I will see you in the morning. The rain 
isn't that heavy at the moment, but it is going to be heavy tomorrow morning. I might end up cooking in here, sitting in here if it's windy, just because it's cold outside. But this is a nice little shelter. I can imagine... Okay, so when you've got the wood burner in here, which would come up straight in front of me here, yeah, then you're limited on space, but you still, it's a big tent, still. But you would have to be really, really careful that nothing touched that wood burner. I mean, these things would melt instantly if they touched. Uh, so yeah, you'd have to be very careful. But I can imagine it's quite easy to keep it warm in here. I've got to say that the little vent at the top they just seem completely inadequate so I don't know how well that's gonna go and yeah there's nothing to prop them open with so <laughs> they, they don't seem that great other than that it seems pretty good seam sealing is exceptional I have to say it's very solid seams really thick it looks like they've done like MSR overlap double and then sealed it machine sealed it. I'm very impressed with the seam sealing. Yeah, I can't imagine this thing leaks at all. Okay, I'm gonna hit the sack. See you in the morning. Morning. It's just before eight. It's raining. Bruce snuck out. He, he does this crawling along the floor thing. It's a trick for agility. It's really fun to watch. Anyway, he did that and got out under the tent in the middle of the night, probably 2 a.m. I can hear him out here now. He's just heard me, so. Oh, I can see his nose. And he, uh, been lying here in the rain outside of the tent. He won't come back in. Let me just show you where he is. I don't know if you can just see the tip of his tail there. But he's, he's, watch what happens when I call him. Bruce, what are you doing? Brucey, Bruce, what are you doing out there? Hey? What are you doing out there? Where are you? <laughs> he thinks he's in trouble now. Because he, he snuck out. So, that's what I've been saying to him. Let me tip this up. He, uh, he, he loves the rain so much that he'd rather be out there playing in it. So, I know he'll be out there. He's already gone, he's already playing. Um, he'll have made himself another bed. He made one last night outside when he was lying there before we came in here anyway. He'll have made himself a nice dry spot by a tree. He's an outdoors dog, what can I say? He doesn't want to be in a tent on a bed, on his comfy bed in here with me. Right, I need to... Um, so apparently the rain's going to get worse. It rained all night. And from what I gather, in here it's bone dry. There's condensation though because these vents one tigress if you're listening these vents are useless absolutely useless if you look at um, like a Hildeberg or even MSR their vents have a solid tab that comes down and velcro is on to force the vent open we shouldn't have to do these things ourselves with a stick so hopefully they'll fix that on the next version of this the other problem with this tent is uh, there are no gear pockets none not one there's not even a big gear loft nothing um, you'd have thought just a couple of handy little slots just to put your phone in and things like that but no there's nothing it's a very bare bones basic but I don't think that that's what they intended so they need to fix a couple of things on this tent because it's just it's just just a bit random but they definitely need to fix those vents that's the biggest problem the vents i'd say i would not buy 
if I'd known these vents were going to be this bad, this small, because on the picture they don't look like that. If I'd known that, then I wouldn't have bought this tent. I would not take this tent out into the snow um, with a uh, wood burner in here. Have the snow build up around the edges, and that's my only ventilation. Those two little things. No, wouldn't do it. I wouldn't cook in here or anything. The condensation alone would be awful. Um, but yeah, needs fixing. So what? I'm gonna have to find a way to fix that myself, I guess. Simple little things. Anyway, right? I'm gonna get up, get a brew on. Hey, Brucey. Look at the state of you. What a mess. Oh, you're cleaning out one of the pans. As I said, so he he does this crawling along the floor thing. Yeah, and he crawled out of the tent. I don't know. Maybe 2 a.m. I noticed he wasn't there anymore. And the gap was like that. So he could get under there. And he made a bed. I guess he's... Oh, somewhere around here. There'll be a dry patch where he's been lying all night. I think it's just on the other side of the tent here. And he hunkers down and he pushes all the pine needles out where it's nice and dry and then he builds them up and then he sits in them. I think that's enough of whatever that is you found in there. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, so entertaining, waking up and your dog is gone. Bruce, out of it, come on. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend this tent for anyone that has a dog. Unless they're going to chain the dog up. Tie the dog up. Um, but I don't do that with Bruce. He's a free spirit. Ooh. So he's already had some dog food. Bruce, go away. I'm going to give him some of my breakfast when I make that as well. <sighs> now, what have I done with my lighter? This. this might go up like a rocket ship. need coffee. Mm. Uh, I probably never showed I always hand I always sanitize my hands. It's a bit of a home concoction, a mixture of different ones. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this boil up. Hopefully it's going. That's the thing with these. They're so quiet, you can't tell. It hasn't actually bloomed yet. It's taking its time to bloom. It doesn't get its full power till it's bloomed, and that's where it comes out, the little side holes. So I'll come back to you when, uh, when this is boiling. I'll make my coffee.
you're having fun in the rain. Nice coffee, Bruce. I can't believe he snuck out about 2 a.m. I can't believe it. Well, I can believe it. I really can believe it. He does not want to be in the tent. He never wants to be in the tent. Unless there's a possum. Oh, then. Then he's your best buddy. Then he's curled up right next to you. Uh, needs plenty of uh, loving, lots of strokes. Yeah. But no possum, he's out here. And this is all he does, all night. He plays, he has a bit of a sleep, he goes and finds a dry patch. He's amazing. My other dogs, I had golden retrievers. They could never do the stuff he does, never. They couldn't look after themselves at all. If it was raining, they'd stick their nose out and say, no, don't want anything with that. No, I need someone to clean my coat for me. I need someone to walk me. They couldn't be trusted not to wander off. Whereas purebred border collie. Bred for farming, bred for loyalty, bred for instructions, commands. They live to please. Uh, agility. That's how he got out from under the tent was this crawling. Oh. <clears throat> Still having my coffee actually, but. Got the bacon on. I just need it to melt a bit to get some fat off it. So Bruce is gonna have some of this as well. Um, but what am I having with my bacon? It's a mystery, but you'll find out soon enough, just when the bacon's almost done. Or I could just tell you now. So I am going to have pancakes. Now, I'm going to cheat because this is camping with me. I'm not about to sit here and make pancake batter and things like that. Because I'm too lazy to do that. And I think an easy life is a happy life with some hardships. So. I've got pancake mix. This is Edmunds. And all you do is just add water. It's great. Add one and a half cups, 410 ml of water. Is there a line? What's one and a half cups? Uh, ah, there's a line here. 
because I know that you have to let it sit for a little bit in there as well. good at this. Some clumpy bits off the bottom. All right, and then I think you let it sit. No, you don't have to. Just shake vigorously and then uh, Put into a non-stick frying pan, eh, which we don't have. But butter to the rescue. That should swell up. Oh, it is swelling up. Oh yeah. I know, Bruce. You will get some. Trust me. The smell is driving him nuts, probably. So far I've used half of that and it was full when I got here, the transure as well. So that's not bad going. Obviously I think butane I would have used, you'd use a lot less, it's probably more efficient. But who wants to listen to a butane burner for ages and ages? Not me. So a question that I get quite a few times is what do I do? It's cold. What do I do for a living? I'm retired. I retired very young. Um, I was in investment banking. I used to do something called algorithmic trading. And uh, I used to do that a lot of the time for American investment banks. And I specialized in Asia. Asia was where I lived. Lived in Asia a long time. Lived in Hong Kong 12 years. Lived in Singapore a year. Lived in Japan five years. And yeah, I, li I liked that a lot. Paid well, I traveled a lot. Obviously, it, I did well with it. But what happened was, I, I didn't realize that I'd got sucked into the whole thing of, you know, how much is enough? And you just keep going and it's the power trip that you get. Anyway, it takes a kick up the backside sometimes to make you evaluate your life. And that's what happened. I was living in Japan, a huge earthquake struck. And my son, who was very little at the time, was at school, at the British school in Tokyo. My wife happened to be driving on the way to get him. I was at work, I was in, in the office. And I was in a tower block. I can't remember what floor we were on. Not overly high up, 
Anyway, this you could hear the earthquake coming. What happened was on our trading floor, because we were trading, all of our phones went off all at the same time on the whole floor. So we had this emergency beacon system. Around Japan in the sea, they've embedded these sensors, these probes, in under the water. Some of them are buoys, but others are actually bedded into the ground, way out to sea. Anyway, they trigger an alert, and then that alert gets sent out nationwide across our phones, like a little siren sound. And it happens you know, a fair amount. And you sort of see, you know, 4.0, 4.5, on the Richter scale, something like that. So you get used to that. You know, five, something like that. Anyway, all our phones went off. So when was this? 2011, March 2011. Um, all our phones went off and everyone just sort of froze and looked at their phones like, this can't be right. Now nothing was happening yet. There was no earthquake. We, we couldn't feel it yet because it happened, you know, 400 miles away. Uh, sorry, 400 kilometers away. So, well, it's, it's, it's a nine something. Nine? So everyone ignored it because like, no, that's, that's an error. It's an error. And then a few seconds later you heard the rumbling coming and everyone's like whoa this is different and then boom the quake hit and it was it was all you know starting to shake more and now we're used to earthquakes in Japan they go on for you know at most sort of 20 seconds anyway this thing came in waves and each wave was stronger than the last wave so the first thing that hit us by the time it got to, to Tokyo, it was sort of, I guess it was, it ultimately reached the sevens in Tokyo. Out to sea, it was 9.8. I don't know, something like that. Something like the biggest earthquake of all time. So by the time it got to Tokyo, it was seven something. So a seven, a 7.5 earthquake is big. That's a big quake. You, you would struggle standing up in that quake. And sure enough, our building took it hard. I mean cracks in the walls, you could hear the lifts banging in the lift well, everything was shaking, Root ceiling panels were dropping, uh, they're all connected by cables because it's the law there, they're used to these, these things happening. Under every chair, under every office chair in Japan is a bug out bag, by law, provided by the company. With a hard hat, smoke mask, protein bar, water drink, I think a radio, something like that. But anyway, if people were putting their hard hats on, it was that bad. It was difficult to stand up. We were still t trading. And I was typing to um, colleagues in Hong Kong saying, huge earthquake, huge earthquake. And it was getting bigger and bigger. Anyway, this went on. <laughs> what did I say? It was t 10, 20 seconds of what we used to. Honestly, you know, whatever like this went on five minutes. And now you, after a minute or two, you start to think, is the building gonna collapse? I was looking out my window and the buildings were swaying at the top, easily a meter and a half, two meters. This is the most violent thing you can imagine. Now, Anne is in the car. And the car is, she obviously had to stop, everybody had to stop. The car is violently shaking. And you know, she's on her way to get our son so um, this all went down couldn't get hold of each other then suddenly I realized well we've got iMessage uh, iPhone so iMessage worked nothing else worked phone calls don't work when a situation like that happens phone calls do not work traditional text messaging SMS does not work they run out of slots there's no way it can support it the only thing that worked was data and luckily we had iMessage switched on on our iPhone so we could communicate. Other people who didn't have iPhones, there was, there was nothing they could do. I guess now you've got WhatsApp and things like that, but those didn't exist then. Didn't really have a messaging system then. I don't even think Facebook Messenger existed then either. So in the end I found out, and we always had a plan in a situation like this, that we would meet back at the house. And that if we couldn't find each other back at the house by a certain time, we would start checking the local hospitals. So we got hold of each other anyway. But when you live in an earthquake zone, you have a plan. So yeah, she'd gone to get our son and 
I was in the office. So now we were like, well, this is unbelievable. What, we, what do we do now? So we just sort of sat there. Markets closed. And then we watched the unfolding situation with the tsunami. Now, the nuclear crisis wasn't public at this point. What was going on in the nuclear power station? Nobody had a clue. Well, we certainly didn't. So we watched this tsunami in real time, crossing the fields. People in the office were crying. It was a very, very scary situation. Right, that all subdued. I had been cycling to work at this point. So I cycled home. It was gridlock. Friends of mine who were driving, it took them three hours to get home on what usually should be a 20 minute journey. Got home, we opened a bottle of wine. The dog was scared stiff. He'd been in the house, bless him all that time. I think we'd lost one plate in the house. The shelves are all tilted forward. They're all the, the bookshelves uh, that were on the floor and the television, everything was hanging off this earthquake strap. So when you live in an earthquake zone, you have earthquake straps that connect everything to the wall. So they're all tilting forward. The gas was off, so you had to reset the gas because they have emergency triggers on the gas. And we watched this situation unfold with the tsunami. Unbelievable. Then the, the news came out about there was damage to the nuclear plant. Well, of course, they, they hid a lot of information, so we didn't know what to believe at the time. Anyway, so the nuclear crisis sort of evolved over the next few days, especially with the explosions. So I evacuated Anne and my son to New Zealand. We just built a house here. I evacuated them here and I stayed there because I had a big team to look after. I had the house, I had the dog, um, but me, I mainly had the team. You know, there was a big team and I, they were looking to me to see what I was going to do. So I stayed, I stayed put, I calmed everybody down. I said, come on, you're all right. Anyway, after a month of this nuclear nonsense of hard to get fuel, food, we, eventually the food stuff opened up again because uh, the shelves were bare for a couple of days. Fuel, you couldn't get fuel for a while. The queues were insane because the oil refineries were damaged. Uh, <laughs> luckily we had a hybrid. Uh, after a month of this, I just said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm done. I'm done. I need a break from this. So I quit. Told Anne to come back to Tokyo. We packed up the house. We shifted everything off to New Zealand. And I thought what I'll do is I had tickets to the Rugby World Cup in New Zealand. Thought I'll watch the Rugby World Cup. And then six months later, after, after everything settled down, I'll move back to Hong Kong and find a job, go back to work in a bank in Hong Kong. Anyway, the longer I was in New Zealand with my son going to a little local school and us having a life in New Zealand, the more I realized, and the more time I was spending with Anne, I never spent that much time with her. I was always on a plane. Was, you know, I was always at work or on a plane. It was, it was, I had an insane life. The more this went on, the more I started to enjoy being in New Zealand. I was becoming a better person. You ask anyone who knew me then, I was I was manic, manic, hyper, alpha. I'm still alpha, but I was manic. Ah, and I changed. I became chilled out, relaxed, changed. So the more that happened, the more I decided, you know what, I'm going to stay. And I did. I stayed. I never went back to work. And that is my story of how I retired early. So I hope you found that all interesting. Right, pancakes. Okay, so now, this pan is quite burnt, but I reckon the pancakes will be okay if I put some butter down. I was gonna scrape that off, but it will all add to the flavor. I'm gonna put plenty of butter on this. Hey, Mr. Fantail. The fantails are hovering as close to Bruce as possible. I mean, <laughs> uh, you can't see this one here. It's just on the on the on the paracord. But one just came and landed. There's a little stick just under Bruce's nose, and before it just landed on the stick, right at his nose. I just looked at him. Hey, dude, what's up, Brucey? You're back in the forest again. Great to see you. Fantails love Bruce. Everybody loves Bruce. Don't they, Bruce? Does everybody love you? Nice. 
certainly do. Okay, spatula would have been kind of useful for this, but whatever. We will make do, it's camping. Nothing has to look good, that's the key. When you're camping, doesn't matter what it looks like. It's how it tastes. This isn't gourmet that we're doing here. We're going just for taste. I'm gonna convert the oops shit. I'm gonna convert this into a non-stick. Right, that's hot enough. Let's make one giant pancake. Now I'm gonna have to hold this at an angle. I'm on a little bit of a slope here. Wow, that cooled the pan right down. that one there and that will hold it in place. There. That'll work. It's bubbling. Gets a lot of butter. I love butter. So he's gonna get his bacon when I have mine. So he doesn't feel left out. love for a fantail to come and land on him. I don't think he'd do anything. He's pretty chilled out about fantails. They're all birds really. He didn't used to be. A bit of training called avian training, avian awareness training. Stops them from that sort of instinct to bite the bird. Now, what are the odds this is going to burn and be awful? Pretty high, especially as I don't have a spatula. I really didn't think this through properly. I went to all the effort, <laughs> didn't get a spatula. Oops. see Bruce. He's hoping that goats will pop out. We did hear some yesterday, but not heard them since. They're probably hunkered down in this weather anyway. Oh, this is rising really quickly. This is going to be ugly. You're all going to laugh at me. I'm going to get so much critique now from the experts. Should have got the non-stick version. Should have got the spatula. You're such a rookie. Yeah. A rookie. Everybody's an expert out there, honestly. I'm just hoping it tastes good. That's all that matters to me. And it will. seem to be burning under there. Oh, it is sticking. Oh no. Yeah, it's sticking. Uh-oh. Right, so this is going to be an ugly pancake mess. And I'm done with it. See, that be. Now, I think the flame seems to be hotter, sort of in that corner where the wind is blowing it. edge to cook a bit more. Oh, it smells good though. It really does. It's going to taste good no matter what. Am I brave enough to do two pancakes? I think I am. And this one is pretty big. 
Alright, let's check this out. Can I flip it? You see, that far corner isn't quite done. Oh, this is going to be such a mess, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> to all the pancake aficionados out there. <laughs> this is what you get when you come camping with me. <laughs> oh no, it's mush and it's burnt a little bit. Okay, mushy pancake. That was my plan all along. I said that from the beginning, didn't I? This wasn't, I said, what did I say? I said this was not going to be pretty, but it's going to taste good. It will taste good, I'm telling you. I'm so confident it's going to taste good that I'm going to put another pancake on as well. Uh, how springy is that? That's not ready yet. I'm going to let that cook off a bit more. Definitely going to need more butter in here when I cook the next one. I burnt the pancake. Oh no. Oh, well. It happens. As the sticker says. Oh, actually, that's looking good now. Okay. That didn't take long. Right. Let's. You know what? Let's get all these bits off. Ooh, have I got enough fuel in here to make a whole nother pancake though? I don't think I do. So, what we do in this case is put some more fuel in. Don't be a hero and try and pour it in while it's still lit, by the way. I can guarantee you what's going to happen. Right, butter needed for the next one. Lashings, lashings of butter. I even put a bit more in. I know Bruce, it's coming. Don't panic, you're gonna get your bacon soon. Bruce, come back. I know where you're going. Come back here, Bruce, no. Here, come back here. Come below back, oh, Bruce. Come here, I know where you're going. I tipped something out there, didn't I? Come here, Bruce, come on. Do what you're told. Come and lie down. Good boy, you are such a mess. You're such a mess. Bruce, go back over there and lie down. No, 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 what's going on with you? Bruce, lie down. Down. Good boy. Oh, God. Oh, he's like a petulant child. Hmm? Can't you? You are a petulant child. Right, so this one's going to take a while. So what I'll do is I'll give Bruce his bacon. And I'm going to have mine. That's right, Bruce. You're getting bacon, lucky thing. Not too much because it's very salty. And you've had, actually had your breakfast. Okay. Right, that's Bruce's. And now I'm missing my secret ingredient. Which is... Where is it? Aha! Pure Canadian maple syrup. Wait, Bruce, we'll just have to wait. I think we've got to drown it. Let's get some on the bacon.
you're being such a good boy now, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Bon appétit, everyone. Go on then, Bruce. Crispy pancakes. They are delicious. Why aren't they all crispy like this? Mmm. You like your bacon, Bruce? I think you did. You walked it down. Mm. You know what? Second pancake might be a mistake. Because I'm filling up really, really fast. And the pancakes are actually dope. So fluffy. But I'm, I'm getting stuffed. That's not happening. And there's no that would be pure greed. There's no way I'd be able to eat another one. Oh, but I will be able to have a coffee. so good. Maple syrup is perfect. This food, this company, my dog, Brucey, in the rain, in the cold, I feel alive. fantastic out here really do if you can just get out there and do it honestly even if it's in the garden just pack a bag <laughs> pack, a, pack your backpack as if you're going out on a big trip and just go and do it and live it it's an escape maybe don't take your phone with you disconnect Most of the places I go to, there's no phone signal at all. So I have no clue what's going on in the world. 
and it doesn't take long to just completely relax because ignorance is bliss. He's such a mess. Anne's going to be so cross with me. Because he's got to be cleaned now. <laughs> that pancake came out really well. With the crispy bits. Pure accident, but wow. No way I could eat another one. <laughs> I'm so full. There's nothing left in here. So, I just got to put it in the dishwasher. Dishwasher. Pick one up for yourself. <laughs> Not much maintenance required. Caprice. <laughs> Come on, sort it out. I'm gonna sit here and hold it for you. This is so demeaning. You're so clever, but you can't keep the bowl in the right place. Look at this. Oh, not satisfied with that. He was looking over there everywhere else now. No, Bruce, that's enough. Look, there's a little bit left in the corner. Look at the state of him. He's such a mess. He's got pine needles everywhere. Okay, that's enough. No, no. Nice try. No. Oh, you can have your water. Is that what you need? No, Bruce, definitely not the butter. No. Ugh. Draw water. You thirsty now after your bacon? I bet you are. Yeah. good drink. No. Go on. Away, Bruce. Away. So with these, uh, with farm dogs, so in this case sheep dog, purebred, like this, farmers or shepherds as you probably would have used to call them, if you watch any, so watch, um, what's that film called? Babe with the pig. Those are border collies in that. And the instructions that they give are very specific. So away, Bruce, no, absolutely not. Away is the, instru is the instruction you give. What it's telling uh, the dog to do is move somewhere. So to bring the dog to you, you say away to me. Bruce, enough. You've, you're such a greedy guts. Licking your lips and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, watch Babe, and you'll see Border Collies, purebreds, exactly like Bruce in that.
I'm so stuffed. But I'm having one more coffee. I think the rain is now dying down. Almost, almost stopped, not quite. But what I'm gonna do is um, have this coffee and then I'm gonna break down camp and uh, get everything back to the way it was. And then we'll, uh, we'll both head off home. But I'll come back to you uh, when I've got camp dealt with and all packed up and ready to go. I've got a stick. Where's your stick? Bruce, that's the biggest stick in the whole forest. Please don't pull my tarp down. Bruce, don't sit on the tarp. <laughs> He's sitting on the paracord. Hey, Bruce, you're caught up in the paracord. Hey, Bruce, you got a huge stick and you're pulling my tarp down. It's, it's now hooked onto the end of his tail by some fern. It's holding his tail up in the air. Oh, God help me. Be sure to... <laughs> and this is the biggest sticky... Comp I mean, it's insane. I'm not going to throw that, Bruce. It's too big. Smaller stick. Find a small stick. Well, site's packed up. I don't know if you can make out, there's a massive sort of hexagon here uh, of just dry, dry patch, which I guess is a good sign. Um, but that was a good camp, I enjoyed it. Brucey enjoyed it. We had some good food. Brucey snuck out, has been wet. Pretty much the entire time, he's happy, he's gone. Bruce, come back here. Come back here, I know where you're going. You gotta go and try and knock the camera over. Come here. So we're going to head off home now, um, and we'll be, thanks, we'll be going out again soon into a big storm, Bruce. Bruce, we're going into a big, big storm. Are you happy? Is that what you want? He wants the big storm. Do you want snow? You like snow. It's just going to be lots of rain. Anyway, heavy rain, that's coming up next. Thanks for coming along. If you like the video, please hit like uh, and if you want to see more like it uh, subscribe to the channel go and check the community tab um, and uh, support us any way you can to produce more of these videos see you soon guys bye